my veins. We all set? Yes. You are, let me just, before we start, uh, John Edmonds uh, has joined us. He's our uh, town planner. Town planner and resident, so interested in both fronts. Okay. Janet. Welcome. Thank you. It's Janet. Okay. Um, I'd like to begin our treasure chest committee meeting of August 24th, Fourth, yeah. uh, 2021. And we're going to start off um, by taking a quorum of committee members. And for committee members today, I have Sheila is present. Liz, our vice chair, is present. Miller, an alternative member, is present. Mm -hmm. Heather a mem is a member who is present. And I am the clerk who is present. So we have a quorum of committee members. Okay. Good. Excellent. Okay, with that, um, I'd like to move on to um, old business. And with that, I'm looking back really quickly at our meeting of February 28th, 2020. And when I look at the, um, my draft notes from that meeting, there was discussion at that time of the necessity to backfill um, committee members. And there was discussion at that time as to folks who might be interesting in participating as a treasure, treasure chest committee member. And there was discussion to that effect, um, but no recommendations were made um, by the committee um, to put forth to, to link. And that was pretty much the discussion at that time. And I think that discussion from February of 2020 is probably a good segue to where we are now looking to reconstitute the committee. We, we have a committee, a viable committee, um, but certainly we're a committee of seven. Um, we've lost a few committee members and we really need to replenish the ranks. So going forward, that's something that we need to think about and if the committee knows of uh, any other volunteers or folks who wish to be a member of the treasure chest committee, um, I believe they go to the selectmen directly to be appointed as a committee member. They would fill out, I believe it's a citizen's activity form. Correct, and it's on the website so you can tell them that. Or if, uh, if you know anyone and they're, and they're having trouble, contact me and I'll personally give them a the form. <laughs> I don't want anyone to not uh, be uh, go through the interview because they can't get to your, the form. Liz? Uh, sorry, Sheila? Um, no, they still have to be Harwich residents? or no? They do. Okay. okay. Um, so if you can, if you know of anybody, you know, please have them fill out an activity form. Um, the more people that the selectmen have an opportunity to interview, um, the more choice they'll have in selecting the proper candidates. More than anything else, I would say from my experience of being a chair, a vice chair, and a clerk, the importance of being able to step in and filling in those positions when necessary. We need people on the committee who can perform the functions that the committee needs to perform. Um, no shortage of folks who are desirous of being on the committee and I know everybody wants to s support the committee and support the treasure chest and have it being viable. But I can't understate the importance of having an effective committee and people on the committee who can perform the necessary functions. Um, so give that consideration as you're thinking about folks or you know wanting them to participate you know, there is that aspect of it. You know, they will, there's more than just showing up at the meeting. There's a lot of behind the scenes effort. Um, with that said, I would say new business should be going forward. What do we need to do to bring ourselves to the point where, you know, the selectmen are gonna feel comfortable that we're a viable committee and they feel confident in the committees and the, 
the treasure chest volunteers ability to uh, effectively have a, a viable operation at the treasure chest as we once did. You know, it's been over a year and a half. People's lives change. I know that some folks on the committee are probably not up to date on um, their ethics testing, their annual testing training, and maybe other performance requirements that the town now has. So those are things. I, I'm up to speed on it, but I, I don't know if everybody else is, and, and that's something that is required of any member of any committee by the town, that um, they be up to date on their required trainings. Is that correct, Larry? It is, absolutely. Hi, Joe. Is, you know Joe Powers, our town administrator? He tried to uh, sneak into the room, but uh, Sorry, I'm late. he needs a bell on him, so we know. But uh, so I would say that, you know, as far as committee members, you know, getting up to speed okay. would be our trainings. So committee up to date trainings. I'm only aware of the ethics requirement, training requirement. You know, yeah, others. It, well, we normally put through people through the open meeting uh, regulations as well. So you know, you know, post meetings and take minutes and. Oh, and, uh, that's right. Yeah, and, that's, and that's, that's that. a standard requirement of right, any committee. Any committee. Yeah. But Eric, if I may, uh, I think you gave a good start. Let me just give some, make some comments on uh, going forward, because what I'd like to see you do is have. Uh, a good uh, open discussion on are there possible ways for us to move forward. You know, as I said, uh, I think it's, it's clear we have different opinions and, and really on a broad scope in that open open discussion, uh, Eric's brought up the committee aspect and that's critical because there's some, some feeling that uh, the treasure chest was somewhat dysfunctional in previous times. I think you've taken uh, uh, steps in terms of your uh, mission statement the uh, rules of, uh, of operation to try to address that. I think you're going to talk about, you know, when we uh, restricted the Harwich only, it caused some uh, mix up for a couple of days, I, I guess, we had to call the police. So I think what Erica, you started on is how the committee operates is and how we do that in a way that makes people comfortable. Uh, the other aspect is, and this is where I'm really looking, and I'm happy Joe and uh, John are here. Um, and that's uh, location, location, location. And, that, and that's a broad uh, statement, because what we have now, uh, DPW has been used very, uh, uh, very well, actually. So they're, you know, quite frankly, they're, they're reluctant to give that up. We're looking for options that we can, uh, how we can do that. Part of it's different locations. Maybe there's some creative ideas in how we operate Maybe the hours, or maybe the location at the dump, maybe somewhere at the landfill, or somewhere else. So, there are really two broad issues: how we function as a committee, which Eric started with, and then how do we operate the facility? What's our options? That's actually, in my mind, that's both uh, the location and possibly the timing. Uh, so I'll throw it up. I mean, obviously, if you did something at the, uh, I think years past. Uh, for you been around there was at one time to use a container. Right. And, right down, and, down. and that didn't work because yeah. it was so hot. It was very hot. Very hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. What's that mean? Is that impossible or maybe we don't do it where it's real hot? You know, well, have it a there's, few there's, no, so there's no ventilation in there, so you're putting everything right. in and there's only one yeah. and entrance and exit yeah. and and it's really small yeah. too. I, I only throw that out and I think you've had some other discussions on charges and stuff that those are the two yeah. large categories, and I'd like to see you uh, uh, have a you know, really open discussion of what, what ideas that come forward. And I look for Joe and John to uh, chime in as well. Don't look at me that, Joe. You're here, so you're going to have to participate. <laughs> so um, where am I looking, and is there audio that I need to be aware of? Or? Well, there is, but you got your back to it right now, so you, uh, you're the Perfect, great. so they got my good <laughs> side. Um, so first of all, good afternoon, and again, I apologize for being delayed. I um, had a meeting with another board member, which ran late. Um, to, to build on what Slack and uh, Valentine has just said, and, and Larry and I had the opportunity to have discussions 
uh, before he came to your meeting today. Um, I've had discussions with Link and his staff about it. And, and I agree with where Larry's coming from in so far as the town's concern. Um, if you look at me as, uh, as a person of the town, would be how the committee operates and where you operate, and that you're in compliance with all of your obligations. Um, to Larry's point about uh, DPW, I will put it out there in this public forum to say that I'm actually appreciative of the DPW where they took advantage of an opportunity uh, to use that facility during pandemic to get work for the town that, uh, done that was necessary. You know, to be able to use that as a woodworking shop and facility maintenance shop uh, to get lifeguard stations built is a savings to the town and a benefit to the town. Um, however, as a resident of the town, I'm also familiar with the, the charge, the purpose, and the benefit of the treasure chest. And so Larry had asked me to, to be here today. Larry's addressed my concerns, if I can say that from an operational mm -hmm. standpoint. And so I'm just here to, uh, to be part of the conversation uh, to talk if, if there is a better location uh, for you to operate in better meaning uh, safer, more accessible, um, or if there isn't. So I'm, I'm here to offer that because Larry uh, and the board and staff have already covered my concerns about how we do an operation. So I, I hope that helps. Thank you, Joe. Can, so, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, uh, directing to uh, Eric, but uh, sure. Okay. sure. <laughs> um, I wondered if we can compromise by any chance. Um, right now the building, there's nothing in the building. Would like to be in there, and like they could use it for the winter time, where they put their large equipment or what their needs are right at the moment. Um, you know, I was hoping that we could have opened this summer. There doesn't seem to be a lot going on except for the lifeguard stands. Um, I mean, that's huge what they have done. But wondering if there's a, you know, we could use it until a certain amount of time. We could clear all our things out of there, and they could have it for their equipment. Mm -hmm. Just curious. Also. Um, uh, some of those, by the way, excuse me, interrupting. I think those suggestions, Eric's taking note, Joel's listening. I think some of those are going to take some discussion and, and you know, we'll have to come back. But also, where the location is now, if someone comes up there and they have um, a battered chair, for example, um, and we say, no, I'm sorry, we're not going to accept it, well, we can say, okay, right down, right down the hill is, is where you should dispose of it, rather than having you know, someone go and take it, and now you're finding it on the side of the road somewhere, because someone says, well, I don't know where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna take yeah. it from, if, if we move from that location. And someone mentioned something about the, um, the fire station, and that wasn't a viable option either. On, what was that, on Bank Street? On uh, Bank Street, and that's come up, and I think uh, Eric and our previous discussion that it was such a large facility, and there's other things going on there. So I think that's, uh, I mean, you'll have to use the same, but that's in flux right now, so I'm not. Okay. So I heard what you said, and, and I think it's, as Larry pointed out, you know, his, his two main bullet items here. You know, how do we function as a committee? How, do, how does the treasure chest function as an operation? Yeah. Those were your two bullets. Um, I'll keep it brief like that. So I think we need, we need know what we need to do as a committee. I honestly think we need to replenish the ranks, get the right people who can perform the functions of the committee. Sure. So I think of the two, we should probably focus on how are we gonna fu function as an operation? And I know there was a lot of discussion in meetings prior to us shutting down due to COVID about having an on-site coordinator. And there was a lot of back and forth on that with the committee. And ultimately a determination was made by the committee that we would not recommend that to Link. Um, I know that there are folks who still think it's critical for us to have some sort of on-site coordinator um, to have a viable operation. So I know there's opinion on both sides of that. It's my understanding that if we do open the operation again, that perhaps there would not be that individual, that on-site coordinator. I'm reluctant to uh, support uh, the expense of adding the uh, coordinator to a volunteer group. Uh, that makes it a harder sell. I think uh, when, I, uh, when I look with 
going on in other towns. The ones that have those open, they they have a strong, they've had a strong volunteer uh, do it. And and you know, quite frankly, we've we've had experience with that too. I mentioned Polly before. She Pauline. Uh, Pauline, when she was doing that, uh, it did function. Mm -hmm. I I think a, an aspect of that, uh, Eric, if I may, is. Uh, in our previous discussion, there was some discomfort that possibly uh, some of the uh, newer committee members didn't function as well with the rest of the committee as they, they could have. I hope I'm not speaking out of school. But it's, uh, uh, it's certainly, we lose track of this, but it's, it's in our bylaws. We can, as, as an interview committee, uh, as selectmen, we're, we're within our authority to go back to the uh, committee chair and people and say, you know, What's your view of these people, too? And so I think we can work together to be sure that Eric says we have a viable committee and you're working together to get the job done. So I would not, uh, I think we can drive that in a favorable way mm. and not get into the cost of a, another uh, a staff member, which will make it a much harder sell, quite frankly, in, in today's environment of watching the budget. You know, and I think in the past, we, for the most part, were able to do that. We had somebody watching the gate to look at stickers um, and sort of police people coming in and out of the treasure chest, making sure they were residents or at least had the sticker. And for the most part, I think that was working. I mean, we had less traffic coming into the treasure chest. There were instances where folks who did not yet have the sticker where Howard's residents were seeking accommodation and the discussions back and forth with those residents on why they could or could not drop off items until they had a sticker tended to, to lead to um, some instances every now and, and then. And, you know, that's something that seems inherent when you have the sticker. And if we are going to have stickers if there's a determination. And I think going forward, it's, I, I'm assuming it's a given that it's Harwich only. I would uh, point, I would ask Joel on that, but I think that, that worked in your committee, but I think that worked well when we restricted it. I'm not, because the feedback we got from Link and, and gang was when booster pulls and some of the neighboring treasure chest goals, it just overwhelmed what you guys could take care of. Yeah. And so I don't see, uh, I have a sense that we would open that up to Thank you, Joe. No, I think it would be problematic to, to expand uh, where we're trying to reopen first. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an easier argument to say that it's this hard is the benefit to of Harwich for Harwich. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, I have a question. Certainly. It's yes. actually probably uh, a lot of you have the same question. I thought this was a meeting to determine what we needed to do to have the treasure chest reopened. That was what I thought. I had no idea that this was a committee meeting. That's why I, I, I was not prepared, well, and yeah. I didn't know that there was a resignation. But, but from what Mr. Power says, if the treasure chest opens, I'm paraphrasing you in, mm -hmm. a, in a way, uh, isn't that what we're... That's what we're trying to drive mm -hmm. today. We're, we're, but uh, why are we having a meeting to determine that when it was already determined by the selectmen that you were supposed to meet with committee members to determine whether it was a, a possibility well, of opening or not? Because of the... Uh, I think the judgment was uh, certainly that we, in order to have that, for me to take back a recommendation for the entire board, I needed the committee members to get together and talk about the best way to, uh, that we could open it, to answer your questions. Does so we're, we're getting to the same point. No, it, it doesn't. Well, she, she, it does. I, what, can I yeah. interject here? You're, you're saying you just thought that it was going to be kind of an informal thing that we were all going to get exactly. together to decide 
what we needed to do in order to, to open. To, to okay, okay, but that but what they're here for is for us to discuss it so he can go back as a representative to the other board members to say this we're, is what we we're, would we're what trying we to get to the with. same point, but yes. I don't we are. I, I want to be sure that all you are involved in the how best to reopen. Well, wasn't there a committee meeting already with Lincoln? It wasn't a full committee. It was uh, uh, Lincoln and three of you, three of the committee members, and that was uh, when I came in. That was one thing I uh, I mentioned is is I I called Link to have a discussion on the, and then Link invited Eric and Janet and uh, Eric helped me out. Eric and Janet and Tom. Tom. But Tom's not even a. And not neither even is Jan and, and neither is Janet is and not a committee not member. A, so I wasn't the only not committee only member. Not only is he not a committee member, but he is no longer even but on the. I, I, I will mean, say as a this. And, the, the, the three individuals, Tom, Janet, and myself, are the last three people who have so run the so treasure chest but, but from still, an operational so, standpoint. So to do this in any official way to get input, I need to post it as an open meeting in case anyone else wanted to bring their input into it. Because anytime we have a discussion on your committee that we're, we're going to, that's going to result in some uh, action, that has to be open to the public. We can't do that behind closed doors. And that's why this is, this is posted and it's open, unfortunately, except for our kind uh, <laughs> that both live in Harway, so they count as residents too. Premature. A premature, exactly. Oh, okay. I got that straight now. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're trying to recover and have this have an open discussion okay. and it's open this to is the a public. Recovery meeting. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, I'll accept that. So back to the discussion on the stickers, you know. Thinking of, you know, okay, it's gonna be Harwich residents only. We would go back to stickers. I'm assuming we'd be giving folks the same information we were before on, well, we'd have to let them know where they could get stickers if they didn't have a sticker, but there was a procedure in that, in place for that before, so we would just, you know, revisit and revise that. But if... Eric, can I, can I put something there? You know how they have those, those police um, blotters where they put, like, there's gonna be a parade, whatever, couldn't that be put outside the treasure chest saying that stickers are required and you may get them here and here and, and that would at least allow people that say that they don't read the newspaper or they're not online or whatever I, and we could say this is... I do believe we had that in, in the beginning when we switched to stickers. Okay, um, I don't think we had anything indicating if I don't have a sticker, where could I get one? Right. And that was information that, you know, we could have provided with a little handout or something. I, I don't know if, you know, the board you're describing, we, if we would have availability to that. Okay. Um, but I do remember we had something like that in the beginning when we switched because there were a lot of folks who were coming everywhere but from Harwich. And, you know, they were a little dismayed that they couldn't no longer sure. um, participate in the treasure chest. So if we're stickers and we're Harvard residents only, Heather brought up the idea of, and I want to, I'm going to paraphrase this, but share with the DPW folks, the building. Is that what I heard you say? Yes, yes. So. Because, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a co-promise we can, you know, um, I don't say that, but you know, something where we could share a building. So, but now, until something else. So from an operational standpoint, in the past there had, I mean, the treasure chest had once been open on a Friday, a Saturday, a Sunday, and a Monday. I think, Janet, wasn't it four days a yes. week yes. we were yes. open? Yeah. Right. I didn't know um, that. Yeah, long time ago. I didn't know that. And then we, we cut those days of operation down to just Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we could always revisit, again, days and hours of operation. I don't know if that's going to be any more helpful in trying to share the space with the DPW if we're both trying to accommodate, or accommodate the interest in the one building. I don't know. I mean, I mean what, we certainly uh, could explore that. I'll, are you open in the winter now? You're not, are you? Yes, we, we are. are. Yeah. You're yeah. around. 
year round. All the time. <laughs> it does so, get difficult to do that. So what would happen if you were closing the winter? Does that make it a non-viable? We could do it. It's better than nothing. <laughs> no, I mean, other <laughs> towns, towns have closures in the winter. Other towns yeah. have a, a swap shop yeah. that, that, yeah. that closed down in the winter. Right. So does that, that make uh, any viability for DPW if they could get it? They could have it half a year. Half a year? Half a year. Yeah, they could. I think what we'd have to do is evaluate uh, the primary need of DPW in that building if there is one and um, identify, um, you know, if there's equipment in there, we'd want to segregate it so that what, what the treasure test committee could use would be like the planning side of the building if you will, meeting tables. Uh, but keep away from the equipment. So we'd have to work on that with the and this facility yeah. maintenance group to see do they need the building uh, going forward? Can they make other arrangements? Yeah, if they're doing light construction, could they can, do those operations in the winter? Yeah. It's an interesting idea. Can the equipment be moved out of there temporarily if we're there? Well, I think that's the discussion Joel said we need to have with uh, the equipment factor, yeah. Yeah, because. Because they have equipment, obviously, when they're, obviously, I don't know, but I assume they had equipment there when they're making the lifeguard chairs, lifeguard Correct. stands. And could That's those, a hazard. Could they move those and do it? But didn't somebody go up there and see what equipment yeah. was up there? Didn't you, didn't you go and see go? Yeah, yeah, there's nothing up there right at the moment. We asked permission. Well, I, I know that, right. but, I, but right. the I don't machines, think that much. The machines in this very, weren't all that big, right? No, there's very, there's nothing really in there, a couple and little things. And it's not that difficult. Things. Like there would be a it's big, not that big deal difficult. Just, just the lifeguard stands, what what are they going to do with those and, you know. Well, it depends on what their plans are, but I think. Yeah. Those can stay I think Joe has the answer. We'll Dangerous. go back to the link and see what they're, if that is useful having it, uh, you know, in the winter. At least half a year would be better than nothing. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. I agree. We'll yeah. take it. It's cold in the winter time and we're out there year round, but, you know. And it's much harder for us a lot of the time watching for stickers to, to, in the to, snow to find volunteers who are willing to come out in that weather and it's hard on them. I, I well, you need to spice some brand you know in, in February <laughs> when it's <laughs> we're there. Mm -hmm. five yeah, below. Well, you know freezing out there and we're chipping ice and we're doing what we can and spending a long time just to try to get the doors open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really difficult task. Yeah. And it's okay. a, a few lot months, to ask of a just volunteer a few months to kind to put of that time. effort in just to get the doors open. A few months. Yeah. Okay. Just a thought. Just like yeah. December, January, February. It's Whatever pretty they bad. Need it for. I mean, if they need it for large equipment, I see putting their things in there. It just makes sense. And then we're not out there all winter long. Are we going to work around their equipment, though? No, no, they can't. That's not can't. good. There's not enough room. No, you can't. So it's not all that difficult to move the equipment out. There's not much in there now. Oh, good. Well, for our purposes, it's okay. We have the treasure chest has formally run annually. You know, do we want to make that just like six or seven, or not run it full time, run it part time, yeah. and find out if there's an opportunity to share that so that I mean I'm looking at a bullet point and saying okay so we would change how we operate in that we would no longer be year-round and that perhaps in doing that we could somehow better accommodate the DPW's needs for the for the facility yeah and maybe yeah, if it's in the uh, in the summer you can you don't need all that building you can put tents out and do more things outside too to give mm -hmm. the DPW, it's a possibility. To yeah. give the DPW more, more space to do. Yeah. Be surprised what you can do out of a couple Hysteria of sheds. Stuff. You know, we do have two sheds out there, and uh, blue storage. Um, the trailer. Trailer. So yeah, I mean, there's. Yeah, when we there's can a will, work on that. We want to make it work. So if we have yeah. to do tents, so I mean, we'll. Yeah. You know, whatever. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I certainly can appreciate the DPW its efforts on behalf of the town and why they would find the facility desirable. Yeah. Um, but also desirable for us because of the location and where it is to the landfill. And yeah. that speaks to the last meeting that we all had and we came to that very same agreement when we were considering other municipal facilities um, and wondering if they would be viable to operate the treasure chest out of and we just kept on coming back 
to the facility that you know we currently operated out of. Um, it just it's right there next to the transfer station. If we're not accepting something, we're telling folks to go one door down. That's the way it, you know it, it from an operational standpoint, it just makes sense. Janet. I'm not on the committee anymore, but when we shot it was until February, um, when Link told me that they wanted the building for the winter for the equipment, mm -hmm. he said, you know, it was really just for winter storage. And I talked to Richard, he's on the DPW staff, and he said, normally we house these things at the water department. But the water department had a project or something going on, so they didn't couldn't store the thing. But that they can now that the project's not going on, they can store stuff there. Oh, uh, oh wow, and, that's good. So perhaps an opportunity for the DPW to store some of its items at the water department again. Yeah. I just you know it seemed like that was still a possibility. Okay. And I have, I have to leave. Certainly. Is it viable to think about looking to open in the spring because you need time to get more committee members, you know, whether you put it in the Chronicle or whatever and say that, you know, you somehow advertise that you need um, committee members and also for volunteers so that you'd be in a strong position to start in the spring. And maybe some of the things could be worked out. I don't, I don't know. Um, so you believe in if we delayed opening to the spring, it would help in um, getting additional volunteers and to uh, better, shall we say, staff the committee. Fair comment. I, I have nothing to say to that. I mean, I. And what about the other people that are sitting here that are volunteers that are not committee members that we could maybe ask if anybody wants to step up and become a committee member? Um, we meet, what, twice or three times a year? It's not like. No, actually, I think they, there's a minimum requirement. Yeah. I think they would want us to meet at least four times a year. Okay, or four times a year. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody, you know, if Mello, not Mello Mello's on the committee, but Nancy or... I'm not looking at me. Don't you say, don't say me. Don't say me. you either. But Rose, even, you used to be on the committee. I live in Janet. What? Because I don't drive at night. No, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about people that are on the com that are not on the committee currently that are sitting here that are volunteers. So we have a strong committee without without going out out into the public looking for them. But I don't know if Rose would want to be in a position where she'd have to um, do the clerk work or be a vice chair okay, or I'm a chair. Okay, just using that as an example. I, I'm, I'm not no, and, and, and I and. And what I said in the beginning, though, is we've all worked together, and I know we all want more than anything else to have the treasure chest open again in some form and providing oh, what we believe morning, is a critical service back to the community. I, I, but yeah, yeah, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves on this. I think if we, uh, if, if decision is made that's viable, go forward, uh, we all can. Uh, beat the bushes for uh, committee members because the larger pool we have to uh, interview and have discussions, I think the better chance we have of reconstituting a, a really good committee. Okay. So I wouldn't, I, I think it'd be, I think it's a mistake we try to handpick people at this point. Uh, you yeah, we have a chance to, to look and see who's out there. Yeah. We may, may come up with some really viable stuff. Sharon? I would, this, I think it's a good discussion, but I, I think we need uh, to, Continue the discussion on the options of moving forward. You have the sharing. Are there other options that might work to give us a chance to at least be uh, viable part of the time? Okay. You know, maybe it's uh, or different hours or different. You know, 
I still want to be sure we're, we're having a broad discussion. We had one good suggestion that was, that was good. There are there other ideas. You know, I'm really looking at this as a brainstorming okay. exercise. So with that, we've had, you know, maybe changing from year round to part time. Um, so we could perhaps both share the facility, the DPW and um, the treasure chest operation. <sighs> Stickers mm -hmm. are which only. Can I add into that right there? Sure. Okay. Mom, I heard that, you know, this cost, we kept coming back to the cost of this um, during the selectmen's meeting. And I was, I've talked to a lot of people, you know, I have a lot of people saying that they wouldn't mind paying $10. That would really offset the cost of the treasure chest, you, you know, the expense that we're putting out there to get rid of these dumpsters. Um, Ten dollars is nothing if you can unload your <laughs> your basement or your, your house or something. Put ten dollars a year, and that would it. really help with the cost. Of yeah, I don't know if we're in a position to be handling money. Yeah. No, when no, they get their us. stickers, yeah. when they go to get their stickers, yeah. that's when, when they, they would pay sticker. the extra. Well, 10. we could propose that. Two years ago, right when we uh, really? when we closed it, and I think anybody that, that we, uh, wants to go there, they they will they will absolutely pay to go there. ten dollars. So your suggestion was to increase the amount of the sticker. No, yeah. increase has never been charged. Ten dollars would be the would be the cost of the sticker. Like, you're a non-resident. You're buying a sticker. Um, oh, so if you again. are a resident, you're getting the sticker for free. No, but we yeah, don't but want we to don't. Just we're saying ten dollars for the residents, and you want the residents instead of getting the sticker for free to be charged for the sticker. Ten dollars. Yep. You mean just so you can? So then they would have a sticker. In uh, relation to your. And what? And that money is to be used to. For the town, for whatever, whatever reason, whatever. They were saying the dumpsters cost money. Anything to use for the. Anything you know, that. Cost would for cover the, the cost. Joe, do you remember what Link proposed initially that we uh, no, the the price? Price? It would be whatever they decide. The Ten dollars for six months. No. Link originally uh, proposed a cost just because the stickers aren't free. I think it was probably less than ten dollars. I think it was even uh, like five dollars or something. The issue was on the distribution of the time. Yeah. Meaning at the time that it was contemplated, that would work for the treasurer's office. They had already acquired their stickers. Right. So if you are talking about um, a seasonal operation, um, that would help given this timing, because we could work with the treasurer collector's office on the, um, the sticker creation and all that. Uh, the board would have to set the rate. Right. Uh, and then you could issue it going forward. And, and couldn't they pick it up when they get their their um, sticker and their beach, beach sticker? sticker? Think, get it all at the same time? Speaking, yes, that, that's, that's what they missed the last time we right. talked about. Okay. Yeah. He's trying to rely right. upon that side. Yeah. But if the town is making money from the, dis from the disposal Stickers. of the um, stuff that the treasure gets that, you know, would have gone to the dump, wouldn't that offset it? Yeah. I, I don't know what that... Uh, but the more the better, so maybe. To a link on that. Oh, yeah. Okay. We don't know the figure. I don't know the figure, oh. certainly. I don't, yeah. think I, I don't either. We've had that discussion, uh, yeah. but it's, a, it's such a uh, kind of a, no one tracks it. Find out. No one tracks it in a real way. You know, you guys don't track it. Why turn this down? Or it took stuff away. Yeah. How much does the do. uh, treasure chest say but I've had, every year? Yeah. I've had I've had people come to me, Heather, as well, saying, "Why don't we charge them for the stickers?" If, if, I've got tons of people, you know. And I think it's a really good cause because it will offset the cost of the dumpster. It'll, you know, people don't mind when they're cleaning out their house, you know. Ten dollars is not a lot of money to get rid of a couch or a chair or everything else when they're bringing things. What about the people that are needy that they seem to tend to go there to get stuff? They can't afford the ten dollars. Well, I think they can afford ten dollars if they want to get there. Well, but quite no frankly, that was cost. part of our discussion when it came up before, is that we're we're doing this partly to give it to people who need it, and then it's a fair to charge them something for it. Yeah. So that, that, that's a relevant question. I, I take the point yeah. $10 as much, but it was kind of the uh, optics of it as much as anything, that we're, we're doing it for people, not everyone obviously, but some people Maybe. really need it, and then we charge you for it. So that, that was part of what uh, we, our reluctance. And then the other part of what Joel mentioned, the timing was all wrong for us. 
Hmm. So there you go. That's another head, another side of it. But. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But I really feel like if it means for us to open or not open when it comes to, well, it's costing you guys this amount of money, so we might, might not be able to open because it's costing the town, then the $10 fee sounds reasonable to me. In that case, I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, maybe not. Yeah. I think that's the way it should be. Any other thoughts on um, whether or not the town should charge for stickers? What do you think about the idea as a whole? Not take no position? What? I didn't hear you. No, I was just wondering if any other, the committee members or the volunteers had um, thoughts in regards to, you know, the stickers. The you know, charging for stickers. Did they plus think it was a good dollars, idea? Plus the $10? Do you guys think it's good? Yeah, is it a good yeah. idea? Good you know, if you're charging 10, you shouldn't charge more. No, no. Go ahead, Derek. No, I'm just, Heather was saying right now, Harwich residents aren't charged for the treasure chest right. sticker. Right. And she was saying that perhaps going forward, the residents should pay a nominal fee of $10 or some other nominal fee yeah. to get that sticker. And that fee will help uh -huh. pay for the operations yeah. of the treasure chest. That sounds good. If we need to, I think it's a good idea. Otherwise. Well, not only that, though, if they do go, they have the option to purchase or not. If you, if you don't use a treasure chest, they're not saying you have to pay $10, but if you do use it and you pay that one time fee, then they know that they can come and use it. Um, Let me suggest that you, uh, you decide whether you support the fee or not and, and stay away from the amount. I would ask, uh, okay. I think Joe, you've mentioned working out some uh -huh. details with Link and some. Yeah. You know, so, oh. we don't want, if it helps, but it's your point, we don't want to overcharge either, right? Right. <laughs> Not if uh, the treasure chest is generating income for the town. Why should we be charging the people who come there? No. Well, so, Heather has, so Heather has the idea, mm -hmm. and and it seems like You'd prefer not to charge folks a, a, a fee to get the treasure chest sticker. No, exactly. exactly. All right. If I if if the treasure chest is generating income for the town, that's my premise. You have a problem with that? No, no, no I'm, I'm, you're I'm, good with I'm, that. I'm, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you're in favor of of charging for the sticker. She's so, saying, Eric, if the town is making money as a result of the treasure chest currently, then don't charge. If they're not. I didn't think they were making money off the treasure chest operation. Okay, well, that's what she, well, the question that was asked. No, so because uh, Link has presented numbers, I'm not sure what we're getting in terms of, your point was we're saving, uh, we're preventing things getting into the landfill. We should exactly, save the town money. Exactly. But and in addition to, to that, though, Link has spent, I think you said, $16,000 to operate the various the, yeah, uh, stuff going back and forth and the, the support for the treasure chest, as it is now. Hmm. Yeah. Now, that may be offset. Our hope is that's offset by the savings, but we don't have real, as far as I know, we don't have a real figure for that. Wait, okay. So. Is there some place where we can get the figures? Well, I think it, my guess is a lot of it would be up to you folks to see, well, we took this and get into the, to the landfill. What, I, I'm not quite sure how you would get that. But, I, yeah, I don't know. You should get it at for the, a long time. Well, I don't know what your disposal fee is per ton. You know, municipal solid waste, your tipping fee, wherever so it goes to. So you could estimate how much, how much weight you save there. Yeah, you could probably ask me how much you I go don't through. Know yeah. why I thought that um, at some point it was reported to the town what they say. It, well, how would you know that? You're probably right. I, I, I'm not aware of it. I, I, I've missed it. Getting back to whether or not we would support a fee for a, re a town resident getting a sticker without, without putting a dollar amount right. on that fee. Um, can we vote or we can? We can. Do you want to just 
make a motion to the effect that, um, you know, the selectmen consider, okay. you know. I, I, I uh, make a motion that the selectmen could decide whether um, a fee would be, um, whether it would, would be, necessary. be necessary, you know, to help to support the cause of the dumpsters and everything else. I don't know if I said it right, but I <laughs> Do I have a motion from another committee member? Right. Okay. So I have a, mo I have a second. Uh, any further discussion? I Go ahead. Is that, just, you have anything further to say? Oh, no. I'm okay. All right. So, so this is a vote just on committee members. This isn't right. volunteers. Right. Um, any further discussion, am again, amongst the committee members? Um, I um, agree with that. All those in, in support of the motion, say aye. 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 That's unanimous amongst the committee members? Did you? No, I vote no. no. You voted, so you're no. voting against? Yes, against, yeah. Okay. Hmm. So all of supporting a fee for the sticker, except for Liz. Because it's been so difficult for them to get a sticker. And now you want to say, well, if you get a sticker, you're going to have to pay for it. it you makes have to it pay doubly. for any other sticker, though. Excuse you, me? you have to pay for any other sticker that you get. If you want to go no, to the beach. But it's been free up until this point. But they're saying it's okay. costing the town more money to have the treasure chest open. So Who if said that? I don't know. Is that true? I don't think it, okay. We know it costs money for the, for the, to operate the treasure chest from Link. What I don't know, and what you've discussed is, yeah, I don't, know, don't what know what the much. what the savings is yeah. that would help offset that. That we don't know. But it's, there's a line item for that. Yeah, okay. Now, we need to know I, that was, in order to make If you, if you have, the, have the assumption that uh, people that use the trading chest are also using landfills, they, they have bought stickers, or at least uh, for the uh, 160 plus for, the, for, the, for the landfill, yeah. or at least they've done online so they have a license plate. So presumably you could, in that same operation, you could sell, you know, stickers for the uh, treasure chest if you wanted to. Mm. I'm not sure of the mechanism of that because we're doing that online, but you could do it. Yeah. Can I take a, let me just take a walk back for a second okay. on something else. Yeah. So, sounds like the committee as a whole is in, is in support of a fee for a sticker. Right. Okay. Um, in the discussion we were having previously, we were talking about perhaps no longer having a full-time operation and maybe having it seasonal. Um, let's take a vote on that. Um, so folks can gauge whether or not we support that. So, could somebody make a motion to the effect that you want to do that, Sheila? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we, we operate the treasure chest on a half-time basis. Um, like on a seasonal basis or a sport? Yeah, six months. Six months? Six months. Should we talk to him, though? Find out. Um, yeah, I'm not quite, you know, I don't know if we should define that. I, I think right now, I, I think we should probably support the idea of, of it being seasonal but you know as, as far as determining the exact you know months or whatever you know perhaps we do that at a later date based on some discussion on what if seasonal works for the DPW and if so what's best for them okay, okay. you yeah, know fair. to me wow. that makes more sense that's fair. Yeah. okay so yes. can I have a motion to that effect say so move a motion to uh, to make a seasonal and depending on um, the and needs of the DPW. Does that sound fair? Yeah, you know, my personal bias is if I if I know you're going to open name a time in June, I'm going to save up myself through the winter. <laughs> take oh, it I'm going to take this. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty flexible. I don't need to have it open yeah, you all don't year. Need it. You don't need it year round. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's just me speaking. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I had a motion from Sheila before she uh, 
left the room. Can I have a second? I have a second. Any further discussion? John, did you uh, want to say something? No, I was scratched, but if anybody here wants to hear my thoughts as a planner on solid yeah. waste, uh, I'd, definitely. Love, I'd love to discuss. I mean, I, I came here to convey uh, the kind of simple idea that Massachusetts has been adopting it, as many of you probably already know, its solid waste master plan. And it's really doubled down on um, uh, reducing the amount of waste that's generated and uh, um, really doubling down on the, what's called the reuse economy, which are things like the treasure chest or private enterprises. So from the solid waste plan perspective, some, I haven't really heard this dis discussed as much as maybe it, it should be in discussions with the select board and link, but this is an integral part of any town solid waste master plan now because the ability to get rid of waste is being severely limited. We might not have it in the state, in 10 or 15 years. In fact, there's a, Bourne is the last um, landfill on Cape Cod. They're applying to the Cape Cod Commission now for additional capacity. And it, it's not looking good for Bourne. It looks like that permit might get denied. We might be at a point at some, some time here yeah. where all our waste is being shipped out of state, which it, it, it really is why the state is looking more for um, keeping things out of the waste stream more than it ever has, and by having, by, be, by reusing products and materials. Recycling. So, yeah, I mean, it's great to think of this yeah. as being a um, good service for the residents of Harwich, but it's also important to think of this as uh, one of the ways to remain kind of consistent with the approach to solid waste in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, good point. So it, I've even heard the discussion about cost here today. One way to think about it is perhaps, and I'm not saying we should charge residents more, I'm a resident myself, but almost to think of raising uh, the amount of the sticker and then diverting those costs to the treasure chest operation rather than having a, a separate sticker and a separate cost um, to the people of the town. You should actually get rewarded because you're keeping things out of the waste stream and bringing them to something like the treasure chest. Yeah, if I may, John, that's an excellent point because we don't, you know, we now get uh, landfill stickers online. They read your license plate. And we, to, to, to do a separate sticker for the uh, treasure chest would be, uh, process-wise, would be difficult. But we did what you're talking about. Yeah. It's possible. So I'm an advocate of finding some way to do this just to, for the purpose of this is consistent with what we're looking at in solid waste master planning in the Commonwealth now and, and going forward. And I don't see that going... Uh, uh, going uh, uh, backwards, um, you know. But with that concept, wouldn't it be uh, in our favor to encourage other towns to participate in our treasure chest? I, Why I isolate it? Yeah, I see the difficulties. With, I think it's a practical difficulty more than anything else. Yeah. If it is to become regional in nature, there should be some um, cost recapture from the region. For other towns, um, there is a you know the the, the county has a great um, woman who's working on these issues, Carrie Purcell, up at uh, up at the county. Uh, perhaps it's you know, I don't know if anybody here has had a conversation with her about funding that's available or the opportunities for regionalization of certain things, like a like a regional treasure chest or something like that. But that might be a good conversation to have. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I just came here to convey that that simple kind of more abstract planning point uh, about solid waste uh, management, how important I think the treasure chest is to that, in addition to just being a good service for the, the residents of Harwich. It really is getting down to the zero waste concept. Yes. When you look absolutely. at the, the Mass DEP solid waste master plan and where they're going with it, because you're correct. You know, they're not permitting really any new landfill space in the Commonwealth. Um, yeah, and you mentioned the Bourne facility, and yeah, maybe there's an opportunity for, you know, an, an additional vertical cell here or there, but um, from an operational standpoint, you know, their days are numbered as well. And then most of it is rail haul getting shipped out of the state, you know, truck or, or, or rail haul. And talk about the expense with that. We think waste is expensive now. 
And we've also seen the cost totally shift with recycling. So it used to be cost positive or cost neutral. That's not the case with recycling. Right? Yeah. Well, that's because the markets fluctuate. Yeah. So, you know, I know in times past where folks would want to actually get a credit for the recycled content of items as as, as far as maybe setting up a financial assurance mechanism and you'd be like, oh yeah, you know, the recycled content of the copper or, or this or that in your photovoltaic array is gonna have value. But then the market changes and all of a sudden that goes away. So you're right, you know, the recycling market is up and down and very variable and, and, and it's not something that you can anticipate and count on. Okay. So good points. Um, so here we've talked about supporting the concept for, you know, a fee for a sticker. Um, we've heard about cost for distribution and creation of stickers. We've talked about open seasonally, um, trying to work better with the DPW so we can each try to uh, accommodate and each other and share the space. And don't forget John's points, uh, the waste management. Oh yes, and I, I do have that. Um, yeah, solid waste master plan, reusing being top of the hierarchy, you know, that perhaps we should get rewarded for, for keeping uh, items out of the waste stream. Um, I try to capture that. And, and can I just make one more point? I gotta, I gotta leave. Um, is the, you, you brought up in the in old minutes um, about policing ourselves and I think that that should that should certainly be discussed where we did that had we had that before where we had someone in charge in, in, in the inside and somebody on the outside on each shift and make that make that um, you know where where their person is responsible um, and so we can police ourselves and there's not that in the absence of having somebody on site as a coordinator that's our best viable alternative. And that's is, saving money um, for right. the town as well. I mean, that's an additional responsibility for the volunteers to do that, but it's something we've done in the past, and I believe it's something we could do going forward. Um, hope folks appreciate we're not always perfect, um, but we're volunteers and we do the best we can right. with, with what we have to work with. And I think Janet really said it very good at the last meeting I was at, that, you know, the tr treasure chest is an imperfect operation that, you know, that, works. that provides so much benefit to the community. You know, one way or another, we managed to, to open the doors and, and, and keep it going. And, you know, I, I think that as a whole, the, the town has really benefited from our efforts. And my sister was the one that started the trailer down in Really? Yeah. So long not, ago. Not many years ago. And moved back to Harwich, so hopefully she'll be part of the, the mix again. But I got to go. My husband had surgery, <laughs> and I want to get up there before Sheila, I see him. Yeah. Pleasure Thank seeing you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Bye, Sheila. As far as how we function as an operation, the treasure chest, you know, we brought up a number of discussion items. Is there anything more that anyone thinks that we could add to that? I just want to make sure that we're not capturing something we should because we're just not thinking about it at the moment. I'd like to add it. Sure. Um, I think the shift leaders, um, you, you probably don't know about this, but when we didn't have a, a supervisor, we became shift leaders, and Tom actually came up with that. Um, I know that, like, Cindy and Eric were shift leaders in the morning. I was a shift leader in the afternoon. We make sure that everything, you know, so if anything goes wrong, this, and Rose was a shift leader, it, that anything goes on inside or outside, there's always someone there that's, that's making sure that everything's flowing right. great, you yeah. know, it's, there's no problems. Um, I think that's really worked for us in the past, because even if there's a coordinator, they're never there all, the whole time. So we jump to the shift right. leader, so that's what we've done yeah, in the yeah. past, and we've all, and that's worked. we're taking responsibility yeah, when it does for work. that shift. Yeah. yeah. At least we knew who to reach out to and say, hey, you know, we heard this, you were there, elaborate, you know. We know who to direct somebody who to talk to if, if something occurred. So, and that had worked in the past and uh, yeah. we've been doing that, what, for at least almost a year, I think? 
and we're, we're fine tuning it. So again, finding people who want to take the responsibility of a shift supervisor because that's, that's a little right. more than just being a volunteer, but it seemed like we were able to find volunteers who would volunteer as being a shift So supervisor. is it a good idea to have the same shift leader the same days of the week, or is it gonna like um, rotate? It seemed in the past that it worked when folks were like, oh, I could handle a Saturday afternoon, I can do Saturday morning, I can do Sunday afternoon. So I we're gonna rotate Sunday. the volunteers? Well, I think if somebody wants to be a supervisor, leader. I think they should focus on a period of time that they can provide the service. Hard for me to say I can be a shift supervisor on a Saturday morning, but I know I could never be one on a Sunday afternoon. So, you know, and I think you... All right, so every Saturday morning, you're the shift leader. In the past, it was... So folks had a specific period of time for which they were responsible okay. for being a, a shift supervisor. So the person that's like Sunday morning is always going to be Sunday morning. Exactly. And if they couldn't do it, we, you they would try would to find an alt to fill in. All right, got it. That's how it worked before, and I, I, it, it, it functioned as good as we were going to get it to it function. Did. That you know, out. We always tried to have somebody there who was responsible. The thing is, as a shift supervisor, you know, being a volunteer and then folks volunteering, Folks volunteering have to understand that the shift supervisor has a responsibility, and therefore, you know, if that shift supervisor is trying to instruct or, or have a, a volunteer doing something, I hope the volunteer appreciates the position that the shift supervisor is in, and you know, That's follows really through and, and follows through with the request of the shift yeah. supervisor. You know, whether that be, I want you to take the gate, I want you to clean, go around and, and clean up the trash as we typically would around the parking lot, you know, whatever it took to, you know, to keep the place looking good, because that's one of the things we have to do as well as, you know, removing items from people's cars and, and getting them out on the shelves for people to take. Yeah. Anything else? I mean, we're holding these folks up here. Um, Larry, can you think of anything else that we might no, not I have think, touched uh, upon? I think this is a good uh, discussion and we can take this forward. Yes. Now you are taking this. Part I'm going to work with Eric as a minutes. Oh. Okay. And uh, we'll work together and bring this back to the rest of the board so, in the suggestions, certainly. Do you have any idea like. When you're going to meet with Lincoln? Or uh, what's the soonest? Well, I week? think. Uh, our um, next uh, selectman's meeting is the 30th, and that's dedicated to wastewater. So I, at this point, I was assume this will come on the agenda the following. Uh, we go back to regular schedule after the 30th? Oh, there's a, a tentative placeholder on the Tuesday, September 7th. Okay, so on uh, September 7th. Tentative at this point, but the board will be resuming uh, regular right. meetings uh, in September. So let's plan on that. I, I have one request. I think everybody wants to get back to work. I think waiting, I'm going to look at every one of these, waiting till next spring is almost impossible for these yeah. girls. Look at, they all want to go back to work as soon as possible. Do you have any possible. idea, like, when, <laughs> maybe the soonest <laughs> it could be back? Well, we get a vote first before no, we can. September 7th, you said? Yeah. I think we need to, let's go back to the board, and we're not, we're not meeting next Monday, uh, you know, because we're on a summer schedule. Yeah. Next means the 30th, and so... Unfortunately, it's going to take time. At this point, right. if we start yep. sharing, we're probably talking about next spring, realistically. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah, that's oh, no, what I think. Yeah. Well, if you take your suggestion of, of, uh, of sharing it now, yeah. uh, I guess we did September, maybe October, but realistically, by the time you got it organized again. And it would give us time to get things up and running as far as stickers and and all of that and distribution yeah and creation. Be we're, we're better off making sure we're doing it correctly yeah. we get permission to go forward better off getting it right yeah yeah and get the uh, you know there's some great opportunities here we talked about some ideas on maybe sharing stuff i think it's a good time too to uh, as i said uh, reconstitute the committee to be uh re -look when at you that. say get permission the, the, board board, the, board, the board has to vote. The board has to vote, yeah. To reopen. To reopen. Is it also going to consider the new virus that's going around? 
things. Uh, everything is, we consider the new virus, and yeah. Yeah. unfortunately, Delta. Uh, it's a fact of life right now. Yeah. It's a fact of life. That we, yeah, so. I guess whether you it's have a town to or us personally. Uh, list, I guess. Hmm. And I mean, if, if you have to look at it this way if the town has a mask mandate, you have to do it. But you have to do it. Yeah. You know, if, if, if the town has a mandate that it wants its folks vaccinated, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you're a volunteer for the town, I, you have to meet that obligation. I mean, you're a representative the of the town of Harwich. And foremost, you have to remember that in every aspect of what we do at the treasure chest, because, you know, as a representative of a town, you have an obligation, you know, to treat its citizens with the utmost of respect. And we need to make sure going forward that we always think about that, that, you know, who we represent, what we're there for, what is our charge. Um, and we need to hold ourselves to the highest standards. And if we don't, um, the treasure chest won't be viable. And I think there are too many citizens in this town who want to see this move forward, mm -hmm. as well as volunteers and committee members. And I think if we all work very hard and remember who we serve, um, I think there's a ch good chance of this going forward. I think probably You've probably done enough. We, uh, I'll work with uh, Eric, you and I, we can work on the uh, game prepared with, and uh, if you will, if you can uh, send the uh, I'll take care uh, of all of that. Minutes. Uh, draft and, uh, for you to look at, and I'll get him to you next, well, yeah, I'll try to get him to you next week. And we'll have to figure out how we vote to finalize the minutes. <laughs> but that'll be another discussion. We'll do that before the okay. summer. So, I'm going to move on to our German. If I didn't hear you, sir. Beth? Oh, never mind. Um, I think we discussed really the critical matters that we need to discuss for today. I'm not going to, not quite sure. I, I don't want to set up a time for our next meeting because I don't know what that'll mean. It'll probably be um, based on the direction of the selectmen. So, uh, you know. I wouldn't set up another meeting for this time unless you thought perhaps we should. Are you, uh, is it convenient for you to meet? Because some of them came in from, because it, what we should do, what you should do is uh, uh, send around the draft minutes and get comment on the draft minutes there, and then vote to finalize the minutes. So we have uh, approved minutes going to the selection you going into the section yeah. right so that would mean you would want us to have our meeting before your meeting before, on the seventh. exactly once you have people to review the minutes and then you vote to to approve the so minutes. your meeting on the seventh is a monday no it's a tuesday why oh, i forget yeah. labor day obviously it's the sixth labor day, day is the sixth yeah i hate that summer's over and it hasn't even begun <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think if we try to meet that. Uh, but Mr. Chairman, if, if the committee is contemplating being at the selectmen's meeting, you would want to consider a joint posting. If you have a majority of the treasure chest at the selectmen meeting, you'd want to do that in accordance with the open meeting. So no, I know. Consider that as well. Although I thought we could have more of a quorum at the meeting, but I thought you were allowed to have a quorum of members at the meeting, but you weren't allowed to have any discussion at the meeting unless it was posted that you were holding a meeting there and we're going to have discussion. No, uh, I think you, uh, the, the short answer is no, but uh, be our recommendation. But it's not a big deal to post it. No, no, and, and, and we'll do that. Um, I'm just trying to decide if you want to, if the committee wants to hold a meeting prior to the 7th, or you're saying perhaps just post it for the 7th at the same time that the selectmen are having their meeting and, and have it be a joint? What, what, what I'm stating is that uh, separate from the approval of your, your draft minutes, as, as Larry talked about, if you expect to have a quorum of the treasure chest committee present at the selectmen's meeting, it's a prudent action to post your meeting uh, jointly as part of that, that the public is aware that both boards are going to be meeting at the same time 
presumably for the same time. Yeah. Okay. okay. I know it. Just like I would for town meeting or something yeah. like that. Yeah. If we were going to yeah. deliberate at yeah. town meeting, exactly. special yeah. town meeting. Just in case. Yep. 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 Fine. Makes sense. Good. But hearing that, we still have me meeting minutes that we want to have finalized prior to the selectmen meeting on the seventh because we're not doing that on the seventh. Right. So. How much time do you need? We, we need to put it in the packet the Wednesday before the 7th. Wednesday wherever day they, before the 7th. We don't they, have many days. Wherever they, well, this is... So you know, today's the 24th, 6th, Yeah, 7th. so you have a couple weeks to do it. Could you do the 30th. What's next Friday? Because then we can 27th. put the minutes in the packet. What is it? 27th. Friday next is September 3rd. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, do you want to try to do it that, I mean, we'd be meeting Labor Day weekend. She won't be here. I don't know. I, had, I don't know what my plan is. You know what's good for me is the 30th or the 31st. Um, I mean, it would have to be sometime next week because their meeting would be the fo following. The meeting's the seventh. Yes, yeah, their weeks. meeting is the seventh. Yeah. This is primarily to get What's, the minutes. Before. Right. That we're just. Can you do it online? Can they do it online, Joe? I think so. Can't they? Rather, what you may want to consider is if the committee's unable to meet, which is not an unreasonable uh, factor given the time frames, you could develop draft minutes, mark them as drafts, share them with the committee and the board, and just tell everybody that they're subject to change, but they may not. So that may accomplish what you're looking e for. Very easy for me to put together a draft set of minutes. That's that's and then put it yeah. online. That's because I typically email. Right. Yeah, and let, let us read it. Yeah. And, and yeah, I can't and put it online for you. You can. No. Or no. I, because the draft minutes don't get submitted for posting until they're final. But if you no, put I it think online, you can, is I, it posted? Is it considered I, posted? I, I think you can. I think Eric can put them online and ask you to individually comment on the minutes. You can't share them amongst yourselves. Yeah. Okay. You can't, Liz, you can't send them to Heather and okay. so on. Yeah. If they all go back to Eric as comments on a draft meetings, you can do that. But Liz, what I'm trying to say, how am I, if, if you don't even have access to a computer, how am I supposed to get you draft minutes for I you to? I, I gave you my email address. You're going to have to, um, Give to you again. yeah, okay. you know, yeah. if you want to get something, you know, so I don't know if I still have it. We okay. have been, it's been a couple of yeah. years. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if that's okay, I mean, if I can take a draft set of minutes and collectively get comments from committee members independently, revise the minutes based on those comments and then those right. are okay Do that. and then those meeting minutes are those meeting minutes okay. good okay good. um any further discussion um motion to adjourn Oh, come on, folks. Just say so. <laughs> we adjourn. <laughs> We're all looking at each other. Come on, do it. Do I have a second? I second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. very much. Thank you, Eric. We'll be in touch. Yeah. And, uh, are we doing it on, assuming we get on the agenda for the Senate? I'm hoping you all can show up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll make it. Heather, you made the motion to adjourn? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah.